Let's get to work right now. Thank you guys for joining us. We have 14 games on our week nine slate. Let's get right to work. We start Thursday, November 2nd, 8.15 p.m. Eastern. The Tennessee Titans 3-4, and 0-3 oh on the road at the Pittsburgh Steelers 4-3, and 2-2 two and two at home. Akersher Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As there is like inclement weather tonight in Maxion and, and there's inclement weather around, it's really nice weather on Sunday. So we're not going to get a piece of that yet. We know it's coming, but we're not going to get a piece of that yet. 43 Fahrenheit, partly cloudy, 6 miles per hour in Pittsburgh and so many great cappers in the chat. Love seeing Sky Dragon rocking with us. All you guys, Al Cervic, Sammy Calmer, Ron Crawford, Truth Teller, Wine Time, Slatsy, Real Deal Vibe. This is a great, great group. Perky, Terry, thank you guys for joining with us. Uh, it's a uh, you're a lot of help and your insights are very important. So we're looking forward to hear what you have to say about these games. We have a great Thursday nighter. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The Pittsburgh Steelers opened up at minus two and a half. Uh, this was a juice two and a half at the opener at Pinnacle. There was a slight move towards the Titans and then it started going towards the Steelers. And this isn't a real minus three for Pittsburgh right now. This minus three is at plus 108. There was a 10 cent move on Tennessee about an hour ago, 45 minutes ago. So Tennessee at plus three is now juiced to minus 121. So a very interesting spot here where we get to see the truth of what will levis is you find it out when a quarterback goes out onto the road uh, this total is very low we're sitting at 36 and a half i mean just alarmingly low opened up at 36 it's gone up a half point we go over to the cash flow for this one and let me get this right here a uh, cash flow wise on the spread 40 percent of the tickets and 46 percent of the cash is on the steelers which I'm very interested in. I'm not going to let the fact that I lost with them last week you know, play any part in my interest in them. I'm interested in them. 72% of the tickets and 99% of cash on the under, and yet it's gone up a half point. So the Titans coming off an impressive 28-23 win at home over Atlanta and Will Levis' NFL debut. He was excellent. 19-29, 238 yards, four touchdowns. He joins Marcus Mariota in 2015 with the Titans and Fran Tarkenton. As the only quarterbacks ever to throw four touchdown passes in their NFL debuts. He threw more touchdown passes through his first three quarters than Ryan Tannehill had through six games this year. Uh, it's wild. Hopkins was the number one target. That's so important for a young quarterback. Make the playmaker happy. Make the most important playmaker happy immediately. He did that. Four catches, 128 yards, three touchdowns. Derrick Henry ran 22 times for 101 yards, caught four for 21. They only made one appearance in the red zone, but they cashed it. I don't think we should pay too much attention to what their stats are before Will Levis, but I don't believe we know who he is till we see him on the road as well. But they're 30th in the league scoring TDs, 36.4% of the time of red zone opportunities. We're going to have that a few times throughout this show where teams, their stats don't matter to me because there's a change at the most important position. The pass rush was excellent. We know that from the Titans, six sacks, nine quarterback hits. Held the Falcons to 4 of 15 on third down. And that's a situation the Titans aren't that good at. The 16th in the league, allowing opponents to convert 38.5% of third downs. The Falcons managed to go 2 for 3 against the Titans' very good red zone defense. They're second in the league, allowing touchdowns on just 34.6% of opponents' opportunities. That's why their unders are always going to be so low because they're so good in the red zone. They lost right tackle Chris Hubbard to a concussion. He's in concussion protocol. And linebacker Joe Jones hurt a hamstring and didn't return for the second half. He was not listed on the injury report. Steelers coming off a 2010 loss at home to the Jaguars. Kenny Pickett sustained a rib injury with 11 seconds left in the second quarter. Did not return to the game. I cannot bet the Pittsburgh Steelers and have a crucial part of the game with Mitch Trubisky at quarterback. And it's not that I think that there's a huge, you know, that, that, that Pickett is such an upgrade or anything like that. I just, I've seen it before. I've seen, I've read the story and the story is a horror, you know, novel where you lose your money and he's going to be a game-time decision Thursday. So how do you properly put together a game script? Uh, Tomlin said this, quote-unquote, I think the door is definitely a jar for Kenny. A game-type decision based on the information that I'm holding here today with no structural damage and so forth to his rib. I just, you know, Trubisky, 15-27, 138 yards, touchdown on the pick in the second half. Najee Harris is nowhere to be found. Seven carries for 13 yards. So you can't rely on him. Deontay Johnson, eight catches for 85 yards. Uh, this... Offense is ranked 24th in both red zone offense and third down conversion rate. Uh, they're just, you know, not 
good. Minka Fitzpatrick hurt his hamstring. He's already been ruled out. So they're going to have DeMonte Kazi, uh, Keanu Neal, Miles Killebrew, Elijah Riley, you know, to help that spot. And then maybe Patrick Peterson because could play safety. Uh, you know, quarterback Levi Wallace missed the game with a foot injury. So before I went over all this, I was going to be on the Steelers. But then I'm like, you know, I don't care that I don't believe in Levis. Who the hell's playing for the Steelers? You know, the pass rush has not been as dynamic as we expected this year. Three sacks, five quarterback hits. Cam Hayward has been designated to return from the IR, but he hasn't come back, and he's still listed as questionable with the groin injury. This defense that we thought was so dangerous, 23rd in third down conversion rate, 12th in red zone defense. So all of that information kept me from <clears throat> betting the Steelers. Take it away for us here, Troy. Game one, Thursday nighter, Titans Steelers. I love the way you broke it down. And if I read you exactly how the notes are laid out on my card right now, or on my, my little word document, you'd see me going back and forth and tripping over myself. But essentially, I mean, we got Kenny Pickett who has this rib injury. And I'll tell you right now, quarterbacks do not perform well with rib injuries. That torque when you're throwing the ball, it's very tough to deal with. I'm surprised he was he is even being considered as healthy enough to play this week, to be honest, after watching that uh, transpire last week. And then, I mean, if we get Mitch Trubisky, so you either get Pickett with a rib injury or you get Mitch Trubisky, who had a 42.3 grade per PFF, two picks. Dude was clearly not comfortable. He was thrown into the fire. So I do expect a better performance with the full week to prepare, uh, that psychological factor. But on the other side, you got Will Levis. Like, how hard is this game to handicap when you got Pickett with an injury or Trubisky, who's terrible, or you get Will Levis, who's the unproven rookie essentially that's playing on the road in his first uh you know road start but i mean the kid was impressive man four touchdowns a 12.3 a dot averaged up the target i think that's a very impressive numbers in his first game out there uh, and but it was at home right where the titans are much better way more comfortable at home versus one of the weakest graded pass rushes in the nfl it didn't look full fluky at all but i still think like you said man we need a full picture we need to see this kid on the road before we can really put our eggs in his basket and then you got some other just interesting metrics. When I started looking at this game, I really wanted to bet the Steelers. I ended up on the other side. I'm on the Titans plus three. And this is even after I found this. I'll give you everything that I have here. Steelers as a home favorite, the market move is 5-0 and ATS. Right now, that would say take the Steelers because the line kicked up from two and a half to three. But I grabbed the three, fully expecting this number to drop back down to two and a half and potentially lower. Um, the X's and O's has me leaning towards the Titans. So that's one database note that has me leaning towards the uh, Steelers. But I think X's and O's have me leaning towards the, uh, towards the Titans. Then you got two backup Q QBs in a primetime game with stagnant offenses. I think this is a, another spot where you might be looking towards the number, the, the under. Uh, the market has been very efficient with these low totals, too. So, so pay attention to that. But um, here's one thing that's there's a common theme in all these games. You'll see so many spreads at three. And, um, you know, so I started digging into the database, which I don't have a big sample of. But what I do have here is pretty significant, in my opinion. So when you have a home favorite of minus three and the total is less than 38, the road team is four and no ATS and the under is four or one and three ATS to the under. So three and one to the under. And you'll even see that if even if that line moves towards. So right. Home favorites at minus three and the line moves towards them. They're still four and oh, in all of these cases, the line moved towards the home team this low of a total and every single time the road team cashed. So I ended up moving on the Titans. I think that with this low total catching three points, I, I, I back the Titans. It makes sense. Uh, you know, even when sky dragon said, Tennessee is the only way you can play says pickets me mediocre Trubisky's horrid. Yeah, I, I agree. And Leonard Welsh says, will Levis under passing yards. If Minka Fitzpatrick's in, I would bet that, uh, even though I, you know, I don't like, I try to, you know, stay off of all player props, but I, I want Minka in there, I, you know? So when it's all said and done, I understand why you went to the Titans. I'm not going to buy Levis high. I would rather not bet and not do that. But after we break it down, I guess you're right. I guess the Titans is the only way you can look, you know, unless tomorrow what practice tomorrow being, you know, Wednesday, November 1st, Pickett's like, you know, looks good, feels good. But we, uh, how is that possible? So, right. uh, and did you tweet out this action already? Yes, I did. I think I CC'd you on it. What did you get? Yes, I tweeted it out. I got 
Titans plus three at minus one ten. You know, it makes sense. It really does. Titans plus three at minus one ten. We just talked about the ten cent move over to the Titans at this number uh, that happened in the last hour. So that's at that's at pinnacle right now at minus one twenty one. So it's a pretty good place to be at. And Al Surrey says he gets nervous by the rookie off four touchdowns in his first home game in Pittsburgh in a three-day turn. Yeah. And Sammy says, Pitt or nothing. Levis is going to have to show me he can do it on the road. I, I agree with all I of that. I agree with that, too. I definitely agree with that. But, you know, these – I was sold once I started digging through and looking at these low totals and these road dogs. And they just – it's a profitable spot. Troy has moved on the Thursday nighter, and I have not. We move on.